Yes, yes, guess who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za Hello and welcome to Creative Ghettos, the show that explores various creative industries and profiles the Africans who push them forward. Each week I will spend 30 minutes unveiling excellent and exciting progress within the creative industries, including but not limited to visual art, architecture, design, food, film and publishing. My name is Kwane Lukunene. Thank you for joining me right here on brandlive.co.za. Creative Ghettos today is the home of Greg and Kevin and we were supposed to have <laughs> Debo Ho but unfortunately he is not here. They are the three founders of Old School Coffee Company and if you don't already know the Old School Coffee Company you soon will. After launching their coffee shop in Newtown Johannesburg there's been an unrelenting buzz around town which may or may not be related to a caffeine high but it is mostly about their products, service and this feeling of importance that you get as soon as you step in. So it was only right to have them here right on the show. Welcome, guys. Yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, English, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having us. It's really great being here. Yeah. Yeah, and we're pretty stoked to tell you about our coffee and who we are as well. So, yeah. Okay, so I want to know about um, how do you three with such unlike like you have you have this unlikely connection and you come from such completely different backgrounds graphic designer, links with a former call center agent, now accountant, and a serial entrepreneur. How did you three get together? What's the story there? Sure. So um, actually, funny enough, Tevs and myself we were talking about this last night. We, <laughs> we were like, bro, how long do you have, have you known each other for? And um, uh, Tevs and myself have known each other since, I think, 2002. So we pretty much grew up together. And... Um, we later met Kevin, and I think all three of us have been friends for over a decade. Yeah, it's been yeah, been just over a decade. Um, it's crazy, unlikely how how the three of us got together. One of the biggest things for us was um, was how we ended up meeting. So mm -hmm. Taboko and I went to high school together. Um, Greg Greg and Taboko knew each other um, prior to 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 us becoming friends. And um, and through our local church, that's that's where I mean we've always attended ever since we've been. You know. Okay, so that's where the bond solidified yeah, church. Yeah. That's that's yeah. that's like uh, that's like the the classic how I became a singer story. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 you guys. Did. Oh yeah, yeah. Greg, you are, Greg, Greg, Greg is a singer. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> can sing. who knows? Can maybe I'll release an album soon, and uh, I'll tell that story. Hey. Well, at least you've got a platform to sell it from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah you've yeah. got your own store, so you don't need musica or any other. Exactly. <laughs> are you still around, even? Well, you're around, so that's what's yeah. most important. Okay, so tell me, why did you guys choose to get into this industry, coffee? I mean, what was it about it? Okay, so, um, so how this whole thing started, it's, it actually started at a local church. Mm. Um, they bought a coffee machine, I think uh, it was around 2008, if I'm not mistaken. And there was no one to run it. So we were like, okay, cool, we'll, we'll jump behind the, the bar and learn the um, ways of making coffee. So we, we got involved in that. Um, we, we learned through YouTube and, and what have you. And then we soon realized that we actually love it. Mm. So I think the most interesting thing about us is that we, we love learning new things. So yeah. whatever we, we come across, we, we want to talk about it and oh. we want to learn and, and find out the history of whatever it is that we we currently involved in. And the same thing happened with coffee. We we, we got started with, with the church, as I said, and, uh, and through that... Yeah, we, we just fell fell in love with, with the culture behind it, the history and the actual process of making coffee and yeah. Yeah, there's 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 a funny story that uh, that we kind of mention every now and then. Um back I think it was around two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, um we went out for drinks watching the rugby 
And that's kind of where the whole idea conceptualized. So it was around the area or around the time that we were, you know, tweaking our interest in the coffee industry. Yeah. And uh, we were just thrashing around ideas over drinks, watching the rugby about um, let's start a coffee shop. And this was back in 2008. And the plans that we had were absolutely ambitious. <laughs> and it's taken almost 10 years to get to a place where, you know, um, we we as a as a friendship, a tight knit friendship, had to kind of decide why not enter the 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 coffee industry, you know, full time. And did you did you ever get someone to teach you more in depth about the industry, or did you just do your own research on the net, as most people <laughs> do nowadays? Yeah. So so the way we started is um, YouTube. So YouTube taught yeah. us everything hey. we, everything we we <laughs> thought we knew. Yeah. And uh, I think just through relationships and through meeting a, a few key people in our lives um, that have the love for coffee as well. Um, there's one particular gentleman by the name of Jaco. I hope he's listening. Uh, he, Jaco uh, Ferreira. Yeah. So Jaco Ferreira, shout out. Ferreira Coffee. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so he, okay, yeah, he, yeah. he owns his own yeah. roastery. Um, little shout out to him. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so he, he taught us a lot of things in terms of uh, the... the Behind the scenes of the co- of running the coffee shop and 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 actually help us get started on our feet as well and just a few coffee connoisseurs who would mm. who would tell us um, hey this is how you 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 taste your coffee these are sort of the notes you should look for <laughs> a very good friend of mine Francois uh, he he was a barista t- coffee tasting champion I think in 2014 or something and he yeah. he um he obviously knows how to taste a good cup of coffee mm. and so he also just you know shared a few ideas um, that helped us expand our love and our interest toward coffee so the South African market has as you may have noticed as well, has seen a, a boom in the coffee market. With the arrival of American mega brands such as Starbucks and Krispy Kreme, was there no sense of hesitation and feeling as if, feelings as if you won't make it? No. Um, so obviously that, that was a consideration when you start a business. You know, you take into account all aspects and one big part of it or segment of it is the competition in the industry. Yeah. And um, and I think looking at it from from our uniqueness point of view, we're not competing with somebody like a Starbucks or like a, a, a Dunkin' Donuts or whatever the case is. Um, our market, we we we've kind of narrowed in, and you know we're open to 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 still learning. We don't have everything figured out, but kind of the plans that we initially started with, mm. um, and our unique kind of outlook of the coffee industry and sorry sorry to, to, to cut you but um, just just one more thing obviously from a from a point of view where there's competition that's usually an indication of of, of, of a large market so that was one of the key key factors and speaking of your your unique point there you know no lie there's this thing when you walk into your coffee shop and you immediately have the sense that you are an important being. There's some. It's almost as if, you know, someone knows that you're about to walk in and you want to get. You're about to get the best preferential treatment ever. Yeah. What was that? Was that designed, or is it just out of the goodness of your heart? <laughs> yeah, I think mostly that, the goodness of our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know what we believe is that. Um, Coffee is not just about selling a good cup of coffee, sure. perfectly brewed. It's about selling an experience. And yeah. that's, that's what we, we want to do. We want to sell an experience to each customer. So one of, one of the little tricks that we do is that uh, when someone orders a coffee, we draw a little stickman or whatever, mm. little art on, yeah. our, on our eye strings. And, mm. and, and guys love that. So we're personal with, with, with guys that walk in. And um, yeah, so we really want to make everyone feel as important as the next person that walks in, uh, despite your standing in life, yeah. you know, what, what job you have, when you're at old school, you feel part of the family. And, and that's sort of really what we, what we want to you know, portray and bring out. Yeah. You know, and also because we, we love God, we love people, and we love coffee. And so it's Come just on. about spreading the love, I guess. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that the idea came about... Two, in 2008, that's when you started in, in church. But when was the turning point? Because, you know, things can linger on forever as just ideas. When was the turning point that said, okay, we're doing this? 
So so basically, um, a series of events led up to the to the meeting of Jocko, um, mm. the 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 camp or the owner of the roastery that um, that we get our beans from, and um, it just so happened we we went to a friend's twenty first, and he had a mobile stall at that time, um, and he was operating for private events, and this is something that we constantly kept talking about the the idea was conceptualized um in 2008 but throughout the time we've been working literally every weekend behind the 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 bar church so we've been volunteering uh, volunteering for almost 10 years yeah and so we were well acquainted with the um, with the operations of, uh, of 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 brewing a good coffee in terms of being a barista but the business aspect i think it really took the next step when we met Jocko Mm-hmm. And he kind of gave us um, the opportunity um, and linked us with a couple of people and kind of mentored us through the through the transition from an idea to actually, you know, starting a business. Um, we took a lot of the initiative upon ourselves, you know, to get uh, the company registered and all the formalities that go on with the uh, with establishing a, a company or a brand. Mm-hmm. But um, the behind the scenes with Jocko, he was amazing. And so from that point, we, we operated for about nine months you know, doing private events, farmers markets, things like that, and that's really where we got an indication of what the market is um, is is about. And uh, even though it was on a small scale, it gave us the confidence to say, right, we can move to the next level. And and getting funding, how how difficult or easy? <laughs> I love the smirks immediately. <laughs> funding, <Yeah. laughs> how easy or hard was it um, to, yeah. to 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 get funding to start? So. We, 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 every time we walk into the shop, we laugh because we, we, we think to ourselves, this is not our coffee shop. Because <laughs> it's a beautiful joint. It's, it's yeah. a, such a beautiful joint. Yeah. And honestly, we in disbelief every every day as we walk in. Uh, but uh, in terms of funding, um, everything is self-funded. So, um. so we had to be very creative in uh, getting the shop the way it looked. Um, there was um, lots of nights spent <laughs> building tables putting together the, the pallets, everything, painting the chair, chairs and, and just making sure that everything is as we want. So even the design of the thing. So because I have a background in graphic design, um, mm. I designed everything and then we just had to white knuckle it and tell ourselves this is our baby and we're just going to work hard and just make sure that it comes together. So self-funded, I would never shop fitter. <laughs> I almost said shoplifter, but I'm going to say a completely different term. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, so everything is self funded. Okay, um, so you yeah. guys became overnight, you became coffee shop owners and you became interior designers <laughs> and you, craftsmen. So, you, yeah. yeah, you became craftsmen <laughs> all at one time. Yeah. 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 So 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 initially one of the um the big considerations for us as well was um how do we fund the business? Yeah. And so um a big thing for us was to say, okay, let's let's bootstrap the the, the operation for now. Mm. Keep things um, very simple. We've got a plan. We've got a six month plan, one year plan. What we want it to look like in three years. I think a lot of businesses fail uh, because they don't anticipate or look to the future. You know, have at least a ten year plan mm. um, and and follow it. Follow uh, accomplish the goals that that you've set for yourself, yeah. and um, and make sure that you survive those initial first five years. Okay. Okay. So right now we're going to just take a short break. Um, I'll have more with Greg and Kevin and Debs is with us in spirit. (laughs) The founders of the old school coffee company in a short while. Awesome. The dramatic talk with myself, Bongani Drama. Bringing you insightful conversations on the Convo Corner, your latest celebrity news on drama attainment, and your latest fashion news on fashion fame. This is Bongani, Bongani, Bongani. And myself, Rose Rataka. Bringing you your latest news and sports updates. Every Wednesdays, 2 to 3 p.m. Only on www.brandlife.co.za. In your face, all over the place. Warrior Online, 24-7, 24-7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. Grand Live. No doubt. (laughs) You're listening to brandlive.co.za. Harnessing the power of talk radio. 
brandlive.co.za. <laughs> Welcome back to Creative Ghettos. The founders of Old School Company... Co- uh, mm. The founders of Old School Coffee Company, I'm so sorry, <laughs> are still right here in studio chatting about their amazing store and product as they move the company forward to becoming one which is recognizable globally. Kevin Peramol is here and Gregory Georapetzi. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I want to get into your roles because there are three of you. What do you each bring to the table? So I think um, looking at our personalities and kind of our backgrounds, our strengths, our weaknesses, because we, we've had such a good friendship for so long, mm. um, we play on each other's strengths. So um, take something like this, for example. Uh, some of us might be more confident than others speaking <laughs> out loud. Um, me being probably the most reserved out of the three. Okay. But uh, but personally, um, Greg's, Greg's got a design background. He's, he's done some awesome designs, awesome projects that he's been involved with. And so literally all of the, the design work from our logo to the interior. Yes, we all give our input, but at the end of the day, he's done a sterling job at, uh, at the design factor. So obviously with my studies, I started studying um, financial accounting a while ago. Yes. And then I entered the working world and through circumstances, I had to um, put my studies on hold. Mm. And um, I, was, I got the opportunity last semester to, to, to um, basically continue. I've got just a year left, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be done at the end of this year. Um, but in terms of the record keeping and uh, and accounting and financial side, um, I, I bring that to the party. And um, Tibbs, coming from a business um, um, background, senior <laughs> entrepreneur, ever since we've kind of met each other, we've we've discussed so many business ideas, yeah, um, so many ventures that have been discussed that we've we've got ideas on the shelf, and uh, you know we're focusing our, all of our energy now on old school and uh, establishing the brand. But um, in future, I mean, we've got large ideas, big ambitions, and so I think. Um, Tibbs really brings an aspect of relationship, PR. Um, you know, he's, he's got a good network of guys that, uh, yeah. that, that he brings. Why was it important to make this a team effort? Um, and also, why, what is it like having to work as, as a group? Um, so just before I get started, um, I was, I was going to say something about the, the ideas that we had. Um, oh, yes, yeah, please yeah. do. So, no, so what I was going to say is that a lot of us have ideas. Mm. Um, but I think we must always remember that if you don't do anything about your idea, it's going to remain, remain an idea. True. And then later on, you're going to see someone else implementing <clears throat> an idea. So, for instance, um, this space that you have here, mm. um, <laughs> a few years ago, before this was around, yeah. uh, Kevin and myself sat down and discussed something like this, exactly like this, in fact. We were like, we should do that you know shift containers yeah get yeah. containers and 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 turn that into <clears> like a into like a business community or, or even properties and what a few years later we have we see people doing that yeah. like, all over the world all, we're like shucks, yeah. we should have <laughs> taken the opportunity um yeah but uh, yeah, back to your question i think i think for us because we've known each other for so long we knew that if we started this together it can only be a success if we work together sure um mm-hmm. and uh and we always say never leave a soldier behind, and so we, before friends, I think we we brothers, you know, and so yeah. and so uh, for me to succeed and see Kevin not succeeding, uh, for me that's something that will break me, and so I'm like, uh, why not work towards something together and yeah. succeed together? So I think I think for 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 me that's that's what's important about that, and also just the different dynamics that we bring. So we know each other's strengths, and uh, we we know each other's weaknesses, so we know how we're gonna do this. And but having said that. Um, it's very dangerous to to go into a business with 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 friends and partners. So you must ensure that the community and the the mentorship that you have around you is solid. So we know that if there's a dispute, there's a way to deal with it. If there's uncertainty, there's people to talk to that will advise us, uh, like really prominent businessmen that we know in our community that mm. will actually tell us, listen, this is not the way to do about that. And guys that we actually listen to. So I mean, there's a lot of opinions, but there's should be people in your life that you know if they say this is what you should do, then you do that. But what's interesting is that you three have shown a lot of commitment to 
to old school coffee and and your friends. And a lot of the time, I think people struggle with having friends show commitment. While it is a good idea, hey, have beers around it, to show commitment to actually executing it. What is it? What did you guys have to speak about with yourselves and speak about with each other to ensure that you are a successful company at the end of it all? Um, so... Um, I think I think for us we're just really tired of having good ideas. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. that problem! As one, as yeah, one, that's a one. problem to have. Yeah. 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 So so we had a lot of ideas. Um, we actually had an idea that could have solved the food industry in South Africa potentially. I'm not gonna share about it because they still dream of us <laughs> actually uh, going ahead. With oh no, that. don't share. Yeah, and no, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, we spoke to a few people. And I remember there's this guy, uh, Dale Dre. He's also really a prominent businessman and he's got, he's very wise in business. And we, we actually chatted to him and we were like, bro, listen, this is what we had. And he's like, you guys have great ideas, but do something about it then come mm-hmm. to me and then I'll stay in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So we were like, okay, it's a great idea. What do we do about it? But uh, I mean, we ended up not doing much about it because we, I don't know, had good ideas that we weren't doing much about it. And so we were really tired of that. And we said, with this, we're going to ensure that we at least get it off the ground. If it fails, it yeah. fails. If it succeeds, well, well done to us. I, guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of the time it, it does boil down to it being a confidence thing. I think a lot of us are walking around with amazing ideas for whatever industry. I mean, look at you. You're a graphic designer and you had ideas for architectural, like an architectural experience with the ship containers. But we are just so afraid because we probably, we're not armed with the resources to actually implement these things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can, can, can I just come in there? Um, there's, there's two things that I think really got us in a mental um, uh, state and gave us the confidence to, to, to actually say, let's move it from that idea phase. Mm-hmm. And that's ability. So we've, we've been trained for a certain number of time that gave us the confidence to, you know, firstly step behind the bar, operate the coffee machine, because at the end of the day, every coffee uh, coffee company is as good as their baristas. Mm. And that's one thing we, we said we're going to institute and we're going to train and we're going to make sure our baristas are as comfortable as possible because they are the face of, uh, of, of old school. Yeah. Um, so it comes down to the ability and definitely we did have the ability and then um, the opportunity. And so I think a lot of people miss that opportunity. Mm. And for a number of reasons, fear probably being the, 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 the largest. And it's really about, you know, deciding to take that risk. I think in, in, in this case, it was easy for us because we were three friends. And so um, we had a lot of encouragement from each other. I think personally for me, mm-hmm. days when I felt like, you know what, this nothing is going to plan. I can't see how things are going to work out. And then we meet um, as the three three of us. And then all of a sudden, you know, Tibbs is amped about this. <laughs> so Greg is chucking in this idea. And next minute, I'm I'm just excited. And it's, it's, it's kind of really good to have good guys doing business together and so yeah. now I want to know about your products the products that you have and often what is it that separates you from people like Starbucks or any other coffee shop Vida um, what is it about old school coffee so so at the moment um, I mean looking at uh, at how we enter the industry um, there's, there's there's a perception in the coffee world that's moving away from mainstream. Yeah. So they call it the, the the fourth wave of coffee. And I think your 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 customer is becoming more aware of what they're actually consuming. And so there's a movement away from the instant coffee phase, you know, just have it really quick, doesn't matter what the quality is, mm. to guys actually wanting to know, hey, what beans are you using? Where are they from? Are they fair trade, you know? Um, and it's questions like that that uh, that give an indication of the of the excitement within the the industry or the the demand from consumers. Yeah. And so we want to enter that that kind of kind of space where we an independent um, um, entity and we we operate it at least for this time. That's that's kind of our short term. Mm. And ideally, where would you like to start sourcing your beans? Because I know you're still sourcing them from Yako. Yes. So so. Um, He's been great, and yeah. and we've got a winning recipe for our house blend that uh, that we're using. It's a it's a blend between a Ugandan and a Brazilian bean. Hey, which, 
<laughs> which is absolutely tasty. Yes. Um, and we've got a few others on on um, on the range. You can pop into Old School Coffee and come and find out more if you'd like to. No, definitely. Um, People should. Yeah, but uh, but looking forward, I mean, that's. Um, Still early days operating literally for for the first month. We just got our first month um, sorted out. So there's a lot that um, that us as 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 business owners mm-hmm. are still open to to change. We're open to learning. Um, we've met quite a few influential people within the industry that have offered their help. Um, and you know, it's 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 the coffee industry is a, is 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 quite a friendly one if you mm. know the right people. Yes, you're going to get your snobs and whatever the case is, but <laughs> you kind of shrug those those uh, negative comments over and you go with the guys you know that believe in you. And we believe in our business, we believe in our brand, so of course, we've got a winning recipe. Okay, so finally, where can people find the store and also find you on social media so that they can keep up to date with what you're doing? Yeah, so we at Newtown Junction by mm-hmm. the workshop. Um, if you don't know where that is, that is right next to the Market Theatre. Um, that's where you can find us. Um, check our Instagram account. Um, we have our directions there, and it's old school coffee underscore ZA. So at old school coffee yes. underscore yeah. ZA. And we've just um, completed our website, so you can just check us on old school coffee ZA, and you'll find our uh, contact details there. Also, I just want to add there's this amazing drink that you should try. It's called the Bearded Fairy. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is so hipster. Yeah, yeah. People <laughs> rave about it. Yeah. And it's just pure magic. And we're introducing a new iced tea called the Bushman. Also just absolutely delicious. Excellent. So iced tea and the bearded fairy. All right, uh, Kevin and Greg, Debs, wherever you are, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Make sure to make an important stop at Old School Coffee Company when you find yourself in Johannesburg next. To find out more about the Africans who drive various creative industries forward, make sure to follow Creative Ghettos on Instagram at Creative Ghettos. My name is Gwane Lugunene. Join me again next week, Friday, from 2 to 2.30 p.m. for another impactful show. Bye for now. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastdownmedia.co.za